under the beard, in the area of the neck, we found an oval-shaped object of about 11.5 by 5 centimeters showing on the surface in relief what appears to be three Hebrew or Aramaic letters. The letters used in both alphabets are similar. Pursuant to this finding, we did two follow-up studies. You can see under the beard in a hologram, one, two, three shapes. Here you can see them again with the shape of something, one, two, three. And on this photograph, it is pretty clear, one, two, three, we see the shape of an object. I was very well aware about the criticism of many people on images that were found on the shroud. So when I saw the letters for the first time more than two years ago, I kept very quiet about this and I set up a uh, set of experimental studies to confirm what I had found before I came out with this. So first of all, what I did was this. We researched photographs of the 3D studies that were done by Dr. Jackson Jumper, Professor Tamborelli, Professor Nello Balassino, Aldo Guareschi with his photorelief technique. They all contained the vertical relief properties observed in the hologram confirming the presence of an object under the beard. Here you can see the work uh, that was done by Aldo Guareschi with the photorelief technique. And you can see that there is clearly here a vertical relief, the same like you see in the face or the same like all protruding uh, parts here or the fingers or whatever. In every 3D study, it shows up right away. There's a vertical relief here. There's a vertical relief here again. Like here, you see a fold. This is also a fold. There's a little fold on the top of this, but under it, you see very clearly the shape of a uh, solid object. Here, it's visible again. I have more photographs of that, but this is basically the studies that we did to confirm that there is something solid under the beard. There was something solid under the beard. This is uh, the copper image that is in the Museo della Sindone in uh, Turin, specially made for blind people. And here you can see very clearly that there's a vertical relief. You can also see on the surface that there are vertical reliefs on the surface itself. The next step that we did was this. We researched many, many photographs of the face taken by different photographers. And we had an opportunity in November 2007 to have access to the extensive collection of the 1978 photographs of Vernon Miller. Uh, the photographs of Vernon Miller were donated by Vernon to uh, Tom Di Mouala in Raleigh, and he made them accessible to us. Many of these photographs showed the oval outline of the object and several of them the shape of the 3D letters. According to photographic experts that we consulted, the reason the letters are visible in some photos and not others, but the shape in others, could be due to differences in depth of fields resulting from different lighting conditions and aperture settings chosen by the photographers. Here you get a series of photographs for this, you need your 3D glasses. This is a 3D study. I forgot to mention this. This is a 3D study that we did specifically concentrating on the neck area. So don't look at the rest of the face. But you can see really like floating in the air something 3D with one, two, three letters. Now you can take off your glasses again. <clears throat> I have a uh, sequence of photographs where you can see that there is grayscale information here. Here again, there's always the grayscale information here. Even on very vague photographs, Jean Durante, uh, there is grayscale information. Here again, there's the grayscale information here under the beard. The three letters were identified what I did was I made, being a sculptor of course, I made an example of an, uh, what may be what is. And looking at the 3D studies, you can say that, see that there's something in relief on top. 
So the letters are seemingly in relief like this. The three letters were identified, reading from right to left, as one does in Hebrew or Aramaic, as Ayin, Aleph, and Nun. Now, calligraphy used to be my hobby. And as the letters of these alphabets are written in calligraphic form, in the past, I used them many times to exercise my calligraphic skills. So I was very familiar with the shape of the letters. That's why I recognize these letters, because normally if you don't know the alphabet, you wouldn't even recognize it. However, I do not read Hebrew or Aramaic, so in October of last year, being in Jerusalem, I consulted experts in Old Hebrew and Aramaic. They showed me the two most consulted Hebrew and Aramaic dictionaries, a comprehensive etymological dictionary of the Hebrew language for readers of English by Ernest Klein, and a dictionary of the Targum, the Talmud Babli, and Yerushalmi, and the Midrashic literature by Marcus Yastrov. And there it says in Hebrew, small cattle, sheep. In the other one, small cattle, sheep or goats. In Aramaic, this word is pronounced as an and means the lamb. An example of that is, for example, in the translation from Hebrew to Aramaic of Psalm 119, verse 176, Ibn Ezra, famous uh, translator, translate this word as an, meaning the lamp. This is research being done by Bishop Jacob Barclay. So the Aramaic word ayin alef nun means the lamp. Now, here we have the Shroud of Turin, with the image of a crucified man, who according to tradition was Jesus Christ, and under the beard an object upon whose surface is written in Aramaic the word, the Lamb. But a much more astonishing discovery has been made, that of a solid object, possibly wood, located on the chest of the man. Written on the object is the Hebrew word for Lamb. Jesus Christ is otherwise known as the Lamb of God. It means the Lamb of God, it means basically the body of Jesus Christ. So whoever did this, or put it there, knew exactly what he was doing. And it is for me a very great proof of authenticity. These discoveries have been made possible by holographic three-dimensional images of the material. For me, religion and science are two sides of a coin. It's a material world and a spiritual world that are one. So I never do an investigation without thinking about a spiritual aspect. So for me, it's a unity. And it didn't surprise me that we found uh, these letters by scientific methods, having a very theological meaning, a spiritual meaning. 